how to use Express sub applications to create a modular app. And uh, to get started, we are going to install both Express and Jade in this case. So now we have both of those there, and we are going to need some sort of app file. So um, let's get started and create the basic application. So there we go. That is all we really need to get started. We just need to create the app and listen on a port. And we get our regular 404 here. So uh, the whole basic idea that I want to cover here is that you can kind of uh, take sections of your site, so stuff like login forms, um, sign up, user interactions, uh, blog posts, or whatever you might have. You can create those in kind of a more modular way. Let's just say uh, user and posts, Let's just call it whatever, like that. So we're going to create four directories in here, and each one of these is going to contain an application. <clears throat> so if I go ahead and do um, so this just created some files in each of these directories here. So this is going to be, as you can see, these each one of these kind of mirrors our main application. We have, you know, our regular index file and a package.json file. So each one of these should um, define its own dependencies so that it is reasonably self-contained. And I don't mean self-contained app as in you could take this sign up app and chuck it in any application. I don't think that's a reasonable way to look at uh, that sort of problem. I think largely they're still very application specific. <clears throat> but it's still a nice way to maintain your app. So um, npm actually does not traverse into these right now. Like if I were to define, say, uh, uh, what does he call them? Um, bundled. Right. So bundled, bundled dependencies are dependencies in npm that you already have in installed locally. They're on your disk already. So something like login would already be one, but the problem is that if if I go ahead <clears throat> and define these like such, uh, npm won't traverse into these and install each of their dependencies. So that's kind of a bug right now. Um, we get around it in our application. We actually had to kind of rewrite our own npm thing. Um, but just keep that in mind that that doesn't really work very well with npm right now. <clears throat> so for this example, I'm going to remove all those package.json files because they don't really work. So anyways, so for that, we're going to have to keep all the dependencies in the root directory here so they're not as self-contained as they should be. Um, but in the future, that might change. So anyways, we are going to need an express application in each of these. In this case, we're going to assign it to module exports as well because we want to be able to access this app um, variable, this object, in other files, namely this one here. <clears throat> so for login, we're going to have login and we are going to render a, <clears throat> a login form that does not exist yet. And for posts, we'll just do Some fake little route there, and for sign up, uh, sign up, we're going to render a form, and for users, we'll just do another, another regular send. Um, so I hope you can already start to see that this is a lot more modular than maybe what you might already be doing or have seen before. So now we need a way to get those into our main application because if we run the app right now and we go to login, it's just a 404. 
So what we need to do is to require each of these in, like so, and then mount them. So with uh, similar to any other middleware, you can mount actual applications as well. So since this login variable here is the application, <coughs> we can just pass that straight to app.use and sign up. But keep in mind that the precedence here does matter. So say, for example, you had a route in sign up that should take precedence over one in login you would want to switch the order there, but usually it doesn't matter. Uh, so let's reboot and check that out, and we're going to get this failure message because we haven't defined any views yet. So if we go into here and let's create, say, form.jade, so this will be our login form, and let's do action login. There's our form, and we're going to need a sign up form as well. So we'll do another form.jade. Sign up. And so there's our two forms, and we need to specify some settings here just so that Express can find them. So we'll do views, is just the directory itself because we don't have any uh, views folder in here. And then we need to define view engine as jade, which just gives us the default here because we're not specifying that this is a jade file. So let's take those settings and add them to sign up and try that out. Oops, what's going on? Oh, I, oh right, sorry. This should just be form because we didn't name it signup.jade. So there's our login, and there's our sign up. <clears throat> so one thing you might be wondering is, how do you have common files here? So what I would maybe do in this case is say create another uh, directory here called views, and add a layout in here. So here's our basic layout. We're going to need to extend a block, uh, a content block, to get it into that position. So in here, we're going to do block content and then indent that. And then we're going to tell Jade that we are extending the layout file here. So we're going to go out of the directory once and then down into here. And we are going to do the same for the signup form. There we go. Let's try that again. And now both of them are wrapped in the layout. So another thing to note here is it say, say for example, this module, the users module was not routes, say that it was um, some database interactions, like maybe it would be a method called all, which is going to pass a list of users. So let's just do Toby uh, terrible typing. Uh, so there we go. Let's just pretend that that was from the database. Um, and then let's go to say, oh, I don't know. Let's go to, let's make one called user list and create the index file and uh, create a route here called users and then we need the users um, mod 
module here. So this is going out one directory to grab this file here. So let's just call it user for now. And then do user all. So now we have a list of users and we want to render that in some way. So let's create, um, actually in this case, we'll just do it by hand. So let's just do, uh, we'll just send some JSON. So now if I boot up, oops, actually I forgot to mount it here. So let's go back and let's grab the user list one and mount that. So there is our user's JSON. Um, so just to kind of recap that a bit, we are using a very flat list of modules here, and some of them serve different roles. So one thing that we found is that we like to name them specific to their role. So for example, if login was, or say users, say users was an API only, like a REST API, we might call this users dash API or user API, that sort of thing. Uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Um, the next thing here is is that uh, all these relative uh, requires I think are pretty ugly. So one another thing that we like to do is to define the node path to lib which is going to allow us to get rid of all of these kind of silly relative requires. Because we want to treat our application logic as first class, so this just cleans things up a bit. So if we run that, everything still works. But keep in mind, since this is an environment variable, we do have to set that. So now if I was to run the app without, it just fails. <laughs> 